holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Happy Thanksgiving weekend to you all. Uh, This is Christ the King Sunday, and hence we have white uh, vestments and hangings on the altar. We celebrate Christ our King the last Sunday of the Pentecost season before Advent begins next week. We begin with a welcome to everyone, especially those who might be visiting. We're so glad you're here. Please do sign our guest book in the narthex and um, join us in all that we do. We begin with the opening sentences in your leaflet on page two. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. 
and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we'd like to invite the children, if they'd like to... A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that when the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord, 
us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? 
And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, and the, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May your word only be spoken, O Christ, and your word only be heard. Amen. Amen. As we've all celebrated Thanksgiving these last few days, I hope that you have found a sense of gratitude within for the blessings in your lives, for the many blessings we've been given, including this wonderful community of Trinity, and more than anything else, for the love of Christ in our lives. We're so thankful. The long season of Pentecost ends on this Thanksgiving weekend, and along with it, a gospel year ends as well. We call this Sunday Christ the King Sunday, exalting Christ on the last Sunday of Pentecost. And next week, we'll be beginning a new church year a brand new year in the life of Trinity and churches around the world as we begin the season of Advent, a season of waiting and hoping for the coming of Christ. So Matthew's Gospel ends today, Matthew 25, with a judgment scene. Endings, they're times for deciding things, aren't they? I remember when my grandfather died, my father said, he was a good man. That's all he said, but it was an assessment of his life. Now it is the end of the ordinary time of year, as we call it in church parlance, Pentecost is ordinary time. But it's a time to assess, how have we done this past season in the eyes of Christ? Jesus in this parable today chooses between the sheep and the goats. He makes assessments. And to be honest with you all, I've never liked this story. I've always seen Jesus as someone who brought people together, not as someone who separated them out. 
I never saw Jesus as making those binary either-or kinds of decisions. Because haven't we always understood Jesus to be compassionate towards everyone? So I never liked thinking of him as the judge who says to some, you are accepted, and to others, you are rejected. But if we can think about this parable as a way of talking about endings, end times, the end of the world as we know it. For example, if you think about endings of relationships in your life, you remember that in the end, we have to make decisions, maybe ask questions and then make decisions. So for example, if you have a relationship with a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you see it's deteriorating. Perhaps it's time to ask those questions. What did I give in the relationship? What was given to me? Was the relationship life-giving or not? And so we decide if the relationship needs to end or is it still something we can work on? Will it still be fruitful? So in this parable, both the people who are the goats and the people who are likened to sheep both sets of people are surprised that all during their lives, Jesus was there with them, with the naked, the hungry, with those in prison, with the sick. This story makes me realize that when everything ends, I want to be where Jesus is. And as I look back on this past year, I could have been so much more generous to hungry people. I could have been much more intentional in my listening to others to understanding the plight of the poor, I could have been so much more giving. But the positive thing is that this story reminds me that I still have another chance to follow the one that I say I believe in. I have another opportunity to see Christ in the face of those in need and to go out in his name and serve them. Lord, when did we see you as a stranger? You know, one year I invited two friends from church. This was when we lived in Princeton. My son was 13 at the time. I invited these two friends for Thanksgiving dinner. My son was very upset with me. Why, Mom, are you bringing people that I don't know? He loved Thanksgiving, the turkey, the gravy, the mincemeat, the pumpkin pies, the whipped cream, the whole, sh the whole thing. It was all so special to him. He just did not want to share it with strangers. So it was my chance to tell him, son, there's a custom at Thanksgiving of welcoming to the table a guest who's outside the family circle, someone who's far from home or whose family lives far away or perhaps who has no family. And the circle widens and there's room enough and there's food enough because Thanksgiving is about a time of abundance and gratitude. But welcoming the stranger is hard. It means you have to sacrifice something of your own comfort. Not long ago, I pulled up to a stoplight in a, right off of 95, and a man with a cardboard sign in a coffee can, and the sign says, homeless, please help. Can you spare a dollar? My thought was, you know, why should I give you money so that you can spend it on another hit of drugs? I see young, strong men at the corner stoplights at all these major intersections in cities everywhere mostly men, a couple times women. And I kept my window resolutely rolled up, and I kept my focus looking forward, not making eye contact, and I drove away when the light changed, it turned green. But I drove away not knowing that fellow's story. I'll never know, he remains a stranger. I didn't ask his name, I chose not to engage with him, and so we had no relationship. Another time, not long ago here at the church office, we received a phone call, and a woman was crying on the phone. She was desperate, she said. I don't have anything to wear. She needed clothes. When did I see you naked? That day, I remembered the gospel story. I remembered the words of Jesus. I remembered my role. I'm a priest here in the church. So I did engage with her, and I agreed to pick her up in Stratford. I got lost on the way. It took me an hour to find her because of her directions. And finally, I, I met up with her. She, she was coming down the street to meet my car. And she asked, could we go to the mall in Milford? And though I'd never been to that mall, she showed me where it was. She knew which store she wanted to go, and she wanted to buy a dress and a pair of jeans. She wanted me to buy more, so at the cash register, she tried to sneak in another pair of jeans right there. 
And I said, no, we're just going to buy these two things, the dress and the pair of jeans, which I purchased with my discretionary fund, not my own money. It was the church's money for the needy. And then we had dinner at McDonald's together. And it was a meal with a story, because when you break bread together with a stranger, you share stories, and then you're not strangers anymore. You start to have a relationship. And her story was how she had lived in Brooklyn and in parts, other parts of New York and Connecticut, in and out of homeless shelters, her family giving up on her. She'd been estranged from her daughter and her granddaughter. And she had a pastor once, she told me, that she was very admiring of and followed. She knew her scripture very well. I drove her back to her friend's house where she was staying temporarily, temporarily, and I knew I wouldn't probably help her any further. I didn't know how much of her story was true or not. Probably didn't matter. She'd lived a very hard life, and I was able to partake in just one afternoon of that life. Maybe her suffering was alleviated for one afternoon by giving her a new dress. I don't know. I certainly didn't affect any systemic change. It was just an afternoon where she allowed me to enter her world, and I tried to see Christ in her, and also an afternoon where I received the great gift of her presence. That's the gift of a stranger in need who came to me through a phone call. And I came to see the face of Christ in that woman. The thing that Jesus does is he takes suffering and transfigures it. He said, I am with all who suffer. So when we give of ourselves to someone who's in pain, somehow we're giving ourselves to Jesus, to the Christ. If there is someone who is sick or lonely, we can be frozen in our refusal to engage with them or even to acknowledge them. Or we can ask, what can I do to encounter them intentionally? This is an amazing thing to think about, that to follow Christ, we have to go where the suffering is. If that suffering is within ourselves, we're called to acknowledge that Christ is with us in there where that pain is, deep inside where it resides, and accept that his abiding presence is with us. And if we have been healed, thanks be to the grace of God, who's the source of healing, then we're called to be with Christ in the suffering of others. Your presence in Christ's name can alleviate that suffering. You know, someday this beautiful world will end, and judgment as a symbol of endings says that if anyone's going to be our judge on the last day, how glad we are that it will be Christ, that Christ, the healer, will be the one to say, you know, come into my kingdom. But the world isn't over yet, so we still have time. Jesus invites us to take some of this holiday gratitude we feel this weekend and transform it into giving, giving to those who are in need, giving with a new commitment to love and serve the Lord and those we encounter each day. For Christ's sake, amen. amen. Let us stand as able and recite the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty.
letters are found on page five in your leaflet. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. Thank you. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. Thank you. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. Amen. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. Amen. For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play. Amen. For those who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity especially Jan Perry, David Gibbons, Elizabeth, Wanda, Sean Sullivan, Julie Lewis, Chris, Laurie Bovaru, Patricia, Claudia, Jim Miller, Sarah Lou, Rosie, Pierce, and any others we now name silently or aloud. For their bravery and courage, we thank you. for all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we thank you. for fond memories of those who have died, especially Ada Caputo, and for the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Turning to page 360 in our prayer book, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. We also pray for an end to terror. Pray for those who died in Egypt this weekend, for their families and loved ones. Saying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Thanksgiving weekend to you all. And, and welcome newcomers, visitors. If we have any, please do sign our guest book if you'd like to receive our mailings. And we'd love to be in touch with you. Oh, it's on. Testing. Okay. <laughs> welcome, everyone. And uh, please join us after the service for coffee hour in the parish hall just down the ambulatory. And good things to eat. Um, Kathy Anderson is here to share with us something that's going to happen next weekend regarding the Christmas pageant, the 93rd Third Christmas pageant here at Trinity Church. I just want to say that uh, next weekend is our first rehearsal. If you have uh, cousins, nephews, nieces, grandchildren, they are all of neighbors, we would love to fill the stage. We usually have 55 children, and I suspect this year we will know their friends, but we have two live sheep, two goats, the corn, and, <laughs> and we have nuggies. And uh, we'll also have another pony. So it's going to be a wonderful Christmas pageant, the true meaning of Christmas. And I hope you'll share it with us and help all the little ones understand it too. Thank you, Kathy Anderson. Did you know that next Sunday's the first Sunday of Advent and we're going to have St. Nicholas is going to visit? So it's going to be very exciting. We're also going to have an Advent wreath workshop after the 10 a.m. service in the parish hall, so you can um, make your own Advent wreath for your home. And then we'll have the first rehearsal of the pageant right after that, about 11.15. 11.15. And then at 5 o'clock Sunday, the service of Advent lessons and carols right here in the sanctuary. Don't miss it. We have child care for lessons and carols. And we have child care for that. Uh, right before that, in the parish hall, for young families, there will be a book sale, or grandparents or whomever wants to buy special books for Christmas for loved ones. That benefits our nursery school. Um, that starts at 4.30, and then Advent lessons and carols at 5. So child care will start somewhere Just in there. about 15 minutes before. Yeah, about Sunday. quarter of 5. So you can take your photo with Santa, and <laughs> then come and have uh, lessons and carols. Um, then also, Alex Beyer is coming to play the piano here at Kennedy on December 9th. You can get your tickets, right? Uh, yes. Robert, would you want to say a word about that? <laughs> sure. Our next Music Under the Spire event is happening on Saturday, November 9th at 3 p.m. December 9th at 3 p.m. Alex Beyer will be here to give a solo piano recital. He's a Fairfield native. Uh, he is an amazing musician, pianist. I commend that to you. Uh, we will have tickets available after church in the parish hall. Uh, while I have your attention, uh, the communion hymn is incorrectly listed. It should be 316, not 317. 316. Thank you. And then just lastly, all the women of the parish are invited to a party at the Friday on Tuesday, the 5th of December. So please join us across the street for next to the library. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice of God.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, but above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. And we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Remembrance that Christ died for you and rose again. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.